All right, guys, what's up? It's Mike. Um, I want to welcome you to uh, my review of Dragon Ball Super Episode 63 titled Don't Defile a Sane Cells, Vegeta's Intense Battle. Now, um, before we go any further here, yes, I will be talking about what happened during this episode and my thoughts on it. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I suggest you stop the video. Um, and if for some reason you guys just watch this video and you don't even <laughs> you don't even care, you just want to hear me talk, then I don't know. <laughs> sure, why not, you know? But um so that's already thrown out, so go ahead and stop the video if you don't want to be spoiled and continue um with your life or whatever it is you want to do. So pretty much uh oh, another thing. Um so I watched this video. I know I'm recording this video today. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I just woke up. <laughs> I had a little bit of a crazy night yesterday, but um, I did watch Dragon Ball Super Episode 63 yesterday, last night, on Saturday. I was fortunate enough to actually watch it early. Uh, the thing is, I didn't have any subtitles. Um, now, these guys that I watch on YouTube, they... I don't know how. I don't know, again, how they get to watch it on Saturday with subtitles, but they do. But for me... I didn't get to I, I didn't get that privilege so um, I didn't understand everything that was going on I am gonna be re-watching the episode again today this morning um, <clears throat> to um, understand what they were talking about so that's something else I'm gonna throw out there right now is uh, <laughs> I don't understand um, any of the dialogue or anything but uh sorry I just my phone here okay so um yeah let's let's get to this so we start off the episode we got Bulma uh pretty much refueling the the time machine she looks like she's ready to go uh the next scene is with Vegeta he <laughs> I, I found this next scene kind of funny because like Vegeta just like straight up this is this is one of the reasons why I like Vegeta's characters character sign is because he is straight up, like, he just doesn't give a fuck, dude. The guy, well, okay, so pretty much he's at the time chamber, the hyperbolic time chamber, and he's training, obviously, so it's at uh, Kami's lookout, and, you know, he's at Kami's lookout, he blows up the place, dude, he blows up the time chamber, and it's like, this guy just, he flies away, doesn't even care, you got Popo, and, um, oh, I forgot the little green kid, and... Well, he's not little. He's not little no more. But um, they're just looking at him like, "Wow!" <laughs> he just flies away, and that's it. Uh, I thought that was kind of funny. I don't. I don't know. I just. Uh, I just that's just me. Um, so then we cut off to Goku, who is at Roshi's place, and he has his little jar, his little pot, or whatever you want to call it, that he plans to trap Zamasu in. So Bulma, Vegeta. Goku, they're all ready to go back to the future and save and help Trunks. So, next uh, we cut off to the future, actually, where Trunks is in a bed. Now, this part, this part I was a little bit confused on because I thought Trunks was actually fighting Black and Zamasu. But it turns out that he wasn't. It turns out that he was actually with the survivors and I, that's that's a part that I'm confused on. I don't know how he got there. I don't know how he got away. But from from my recollection here, I, I believe he was still fighting in the last episode. So I don't I don't know that that was that was a bit of a jump there. I, I don't see how that happened. Um, so anyway, anyways, he's with the survivors. I guess he was in bed. He was injured pretty badly. He was wrapped in bandages. He wakes up. Sees Yajirobe, Yajirobe's, just, I don't know what the hell he's doing there. Um, you know, he looks around, he's looking, Trunks is looking around for Mime, and yeah, I, I'm assuming Yajirobe, because, okay, I've been watching Dragon Ball Super for quite some time now. Um, I went back all the way to the episode one, where it was Battle of the Gods, and then Resurrection F. Um, and I guess I'm kind of starting to learn the language. Because I'm kind of getting a sense of what they're saying um, in these episodes. 
But pretty much Yajirobe, I guess, is telling Trunks where Mai went. And at that point, I was thinking that, um, well, obviously, Mai, uh, you know, went to go scout Black and Zamasu at their little cabin. So Trunks is concerned. The guy gets up, leaves, is going to go follow Mai. Mai, so we cut to Mai and her followers. Cause there's only, I think there's only like two dudes that's, that are with her. I'm sorry for the sniffles too, man. I'm I'm kind of, huh. Whew. <laughs> and this is a lot of talking, guys. I don't I don't talk a lot. I'm not really much of a talker, but well, <laughs> I am a talker, but like only when it comes to like stuff like this, Dragon Ball Super. So, anyways, we cut to the next scene with Mime, and she's in the forest. It's nighttime. She's scoping out Black and Zamasu. Black and Zamasu are there at that cabin house thing. They're just drinking their tea. I don't know what they're saying to each other. Um, and, okay, so, the, I don't know what it was, but something about this, this, okay, so Mai has a sniper rifle, she's gonna, obviously gonna shoot Black, she scopes up the crosshairs on his head for a headshot and everything, like, she's ready to go, and there's this bullet, this bullet, I'm not too sure why, maybe it's just me, but for some reason, I think that that bullet is different than the majority of, um, than, than the rest of the bullets because she only has one bullet for some reason and it's like I, I don't understand I don't, I don't know if that's just because um you know they don't have a lot of ammunition you know since their world's gone to crap and or or maybe they just really have one bullet another thing that's really bothering me about this is that mine is how do I say I don't want to I mean okay don't get me wrong, Mai is, she has a lot of character, she, she is, you know, she's got a lot of guts, you know, for taking on Black and Zamasu by herself, and doing the best that she can, especially for someone who's not super strong, like Goku, Trunks, and all them, so she's doing the best she can, the thing is, in a way, I kind of find her to be selfish, mainly because of all the crap, like, okay, so if Mai dies, Trunks is just going to be so damn depressed. And, and this is the reason why I think she's just a little bit selfish and she's not thinking about Trunks' feelings. Because Trunks, future Trunks has just been through so much, guys. Trunks, he lost all his Z, the Z fighters when he was a little kid. He lost his best friend, Gohan, future Gohan, who was I think personally was a badass character. <clears throat> Actually, I think I'm getting sick, to be honest. I don't know. <clears throat> then he has to defend the world all by himself against any threat. Then he loses his mom to Black and Zamasu. Then the earth is pretty much gone to crap. And now he has nothing left but mine. Uh, and he, he thought he lost her um, at the beginning of the arc. So that was something else. And you saw how depressed he is without Mai because he will without everything because he's been through so much. Um, so I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I, I honestly think she's being a little bit selfish when it comes to that, but regardless, she still has a lot of guts, and I can see why um, she, she's trying her best, but it's just like, I don't understand why you're trying something else, unless that bullet does something to Goku uh, Black, but I don't know. Um, so yeah, that, that's something I, I think, but the, the bullet... I don't know exactly what kind of bullet it is. Again, I haven't watched um, the subtitled version. Maybe they mentioned something about the bullet that I don't know of. I do plan on watching uh, the, the subtitled version. So I think there's something different. But anyway, she loads it up into her sniper rifle, shoots it right into Black's fore forehead, knocks the dude over, and Black is pretty much pissed off. <laughs> Black is pissed off. Zamasu's, I guess, pissed off. I don't know. They both look out onto the forest, to the hills, it's nighttime, they can't find him. They blast, um, they just shoot a key blast directly at Mai. I don't know, I don't know if they actually did find her, if they did see her, if they sensed her somehow. But that blast was coming from Mai. And just before it even gets to her, Trunk shows up, deflects it, it's on. He's happy to see Mai. Trunk, Trunks is happy to see that Mai's okay. She didn't get her, but right off the bat, the dude doesn't waste any time, tells her to leave, 
powers up to that form that nobody knows of. There's no name yet to to uh, <clears throat> what, what what form that is because it, it's it's weird because it's like a blue key like a, he's got the blue color to it but he's also still in his super saiyan form so i'm a little bit i don't know exactly what form it is either myself but i'm just saying um that i guess he's managed to um how do you say it? he's managed to master it i guess you can say or he's e he can easily go into that form now because he um before i thought it was just rage I thought he only got to that level because of rage, but I guess now it's it's a, it's um it's a normal thing for him. He can just easily go into that that form now with no problem. So I'm assuming he's gotten used to it. He's mastered it really fastly, fast, sorry. And um he just you know, he lump he uh he lunges forward and just starts uh, heading towards Black and Zamasu. Black turns into Super Saiyan Rose, lunges toward him. Uh, Zamasu follows him right back. Trunk starts off with these key blasts, just starting throwing them at Zamasu. For some reason, this next part, when Zamasu was taking these key blasts from Trunks, it was a little bit weird because it looked like Zamasu was actually enjoying the pain for some reason, which that that I, I didn't get. I didn't get. Anyways, Black and Black and Trunks start going at it with their swords. You know, Trunks with his sword, Black with his blade. It was a really awesome fighting scene. Uh, this next part. Like, this next part was just awesome. When Trunks hit Black with that Gallant gun, that scene there was just so amazing, dude. I literally thought that he had knocked Black out for the count because of how they made it seem. Like, Black looked like he took some serious damage. I'm, it just looked legit. Like, it was an awesome scene. If you haven't seen it, guys, you guys gotta go see it now. If you're especially if you're a fan, it's there's already subtitles. Um, I'm sure. Um, so that that happens, then he, um, you know, Trunks is tired. He after he used that Gallic gun, you know, he's really tired because he used all his power. I'm assuming goes down to the forest to get his sword. Zamasu's waiting there for him. They duke it out for a little bit. Um, and pretty much, uh, while, well, like in most cases, uh, Trunks gets double teamed, Black comes out of nowhere, I guess Black recovered from that Gallic gun pretty fast, stabs him in the back, and Trunks is out for the count, goes down out of his Super Saiyan form, and as soon as he goes down, you see the time machine come in. It's like, it's, it's just, it, I don't know. So Goku, Bulma, Vegeta are already there. They, so, we didn't really leave. I mean, there wasn't really, in this whole episode, there wasn't really much about Whis and Beerus and what they were doing. It was mainly all in the future. We were just staying in that one spot. So, um, I thought that was kind of cool. Hold on, my eye. <laughs> uh, I got the sniffles. And, I, yeah, I think I'm getting sick. I'm not sure. I hope not. Cause that's just more. I'm. Gonna, I don't want to miss days at work, and then my paycheck be horrible. <laughs> anyway, so time machine comes in. You know, Trunks is happy to see him, but he's knocked out. Um, Goku, uh, Vegeta, Bulma all get out of the time chamber. Black and Zamasu confront them right off the bat, guys. This is how I knew. This 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 was an awesome scene. Well, not awesome. It was an awesome moment because. Black wasn't taking this crap no more, dude. He was he was tired of that time machine. The dude straight up destroys the time machine. It's on fire. That's it. That's how you know they ain't going nowhere for a while now this time. So when I saw that, I was like, this is this is gonna be awesome. You know, there's no more going back to the past. They're staying here to fight and duke it out. And I can't wait because it's two on two. This is like tag team right here, dude. Goku and Vegeta versus Zamasu and Black. Um I'm, I'm really hyped up for that. So, Trunks... Okay, so, another part that I was a bit confused about is the fact that Trunks took that blade from Black, you know, through his chest. You know, he fell down, like I mentioned. Mai was there to, um, I guess, he, well, obviously, Mai is always there to help. And I'm a bit confused because 
they actually show later on that Trunks is okay. Like, as if that mortal wound wasn't... It didn't really phase him. Because he's able to sit up, he's able to stand up, he's able to do everything. Later on, he meets his mom, Bulma. Bulma's happy to see him, and, you know, she's crying because... I don't, I don't know, really know... Um, she just was worried, like a mother always is. <laughs> um, but... What confused me the most is that he didn't have any kind of, like, hole in his chest or anything like that. So, I, I was a bit confused because when they did it to Vegeta, Vegeta was just straight up hurt until he took the Sensu Bean. Goku, well, Goku managed to get by it only because he was pissed off. You know, you know, had that moment when uh, um, they told him what they did to his wife and kid. That's the reason he was able to bypass it. But eventually, he was also knocked out too until he got the sensu beam. Trunks, he just... I don't know. He he seemed to be okay. <laughs> um, so this next scene... Sorry, I got a little too far ahead of myself. So this next scene is... Um, Zamasu and Black confront Goku and G Vegeta. Uh, they destroy the time machine again. They're looking at each other. They have like this stare down... It's like, um, they're just, they're, they're just right there. They're not really directly in front of each other. They got some distance in between them, but they're both talking on each other's side. And this next scene is where, um, I, I was a bit confused, but I kind of got the point that Vegeta and Goku start arguing about the jar, the, the, the pot, the pot that Goku was trying, uh, planning on trapping Zamasu in that jar, that pot was in the time machine. So that, that, it's broken. It's done. Later on, you see Trunks and her mom. The mom's like, look, you got to fix this, this pot or whatever. And she gives them some glue. So I, well, I, I think, I think it's glue. I mean, I would assume it's glue. <laughs> so Trunks is like, oh, I can't believe I got to do this crap. But I guess, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll try my best or whatever. <laughs> so I thought that was a little funny because, you know, your mom's always giving you orders and you're like, ah, oh, you know, all right, fine. I'll do it because, you know, we all love our moms. But, yeah, the pot is destroyed, so pretty much, um, they're, 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 they both get, they all get in their fighting stances. They're about to go and, and throw down, but before it happens, Gowasu and our Kaioshin from our universe, Supreme Kai from our universe, shows up, um, and I, there was a lot of talking, I didn't really understand what was going on, um, yeah, so that I, I can't tell you guys what they were talking about. I'm gonna have to watch it. So I'm sorry that this is my review without subtitles. I just I was excited and I, I love this episode pretty much overall. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of talking going on. This Black and Zamasu ain't taking their crap. They shoot blast right at them. Right before it gets to them, Goku and Vegeta stop that blast. They're in their god forms. They get straight to business. They start throwing down. Vegeta takes on Black, and Zamasu's taking on Goku. They're doing it, dude. This, I haven't. I don't think I can think of any moment in Dragon Ball Z. Well, I mean, there was like the Cell Saga when everyone was fighting those little cells, and Gohan was fighting the the main. Well, obviously Cell. Um, but this this tag team, you know, Zamasu and Black against Goku and Vegeta, like. There's two fights going on, and that part I found pretty cool. Black is pretty surprised by Vegeta because he, well, from what it seems like, he, he he's pretty surprised by Vegeta because Vegeta is whooping his ass, just putting punches on him left and right. And Zamasu notices this as well, and he ditches Goku to go and help Black. Obviously, they have like this double teaming thing. That's how they've been doing it before. That's how they were winning before because they were double teaming each and every one of them individually. And that part I hated because there should have been some teamwork there earlier. In the earlier episodes, Goku was taking on Zamasu and Black by himself because Vegeta and Trunks had been taken out by one blast. And the whole time Goku's fighting them, where are Vegeta and Trunks? They were just standing around. I have no idea what they were doing. So... There was no teamwork, but this next part is Zamasu tries to help out Black, kicks Vegeta in the back, 
knocks Vegeta down a little bit. Vegeta powers up again, goes straight for Black. It totally, he totally ignores Zamasu. Zamasu is coming back for another hit, but before he gets that second hit on Vegeta, Goku hits him, knocks him down to the ground, and then Goku's like, "You're like he's like Goku's pissed." You can tell Goku's pissed. He's like, "You're not, you're not gonna do this crap." There's teamwork, guys. There is teamwork between two of my favorite characters, Vegeta and Goku. They're kicking ass. It's awesome, dude. There's a whole lot of fighting, a whole lot of action in this episode. I'm really happy with the way it came out, and Goku just straight up owns him. You know, does the whole um, knocking him to the ground and just like you're not going nowhere. That that was awesome to me. So. I love that scene. Um, this next scene, well, this is pretty much the end of the episode where Vegeta is just ruthless, dude. He is savage. Again, he is knocking Black through buildings, kicking his ass. There's a point, dude. There is a point in this episode when when the Vegeta literally g grabs Goku Black by his hair. He grabs him by his hair, lifts him up, and headbutts the motherfucker, dude. He headbutts him. Like, dude, Vegeta, I don't know what kind of training he went through in that time chamber. But, dude, the guy is straight up a badass, dude. Like, without a doubt. And this is why he's one of my favorite characters. Because he's so... The dude is straight up... He's a man, dude. Like, I, I can't deny it, dude. Vegeta is a man. <laughs> he is ruthless. And, you know, I just... I love the whole, the, the whole episode. So yesterday, when I watched this video, um, I didn't get to see the preview. It didn't show me the preview. It just showed me the full episode uh, for next week. For So I didn't get to see the preview for next week. Um, I will be checking that out when I watch the subtitle version of it. Overall, dude, I think that this episode was a 9 out of 10. It had the action. It had the comedy. It had the intensity. It had everything. I think it was a 9 out of 10. And I can't wait to see next week's episode. But that's it for now, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end it. If you guys have any thoughts on what you um, think about this episode, your thoughts, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'll talk to you guys about it. And we'll geek out together. <laughs> um, I'm sorry for my voice here. I'm just... This isn't me. This isn't me. You know, I, I'm not the kind of guy that really talks a lot. Um... Obviously, I'm talking by myself. Well, not talking by myself because you guys are going to hear it. But I wish I could have somebody else to geek out with here. And I don't know. So, anyways, that's it for now, guys. Um, I will see you uh, for next week. Um, six, episode 64. And I believe that this next episode, I think, um, I need to check. But I think this next episode is where Zamasu and Black are going to fuse. I, I think. I'm not too sure. But I'll, I'll, I'll get into that next week. Um, I'll try to get the video up by Saturday if I can, my review. And if not, then by Sunday morning for sure. But that's it. So I'll see you then. As always, y'all take care. Laters.